hello. Uh, okay, so uh, I, I have uh, uh, released the review view for midterm bonus for the um, third quiz, uh, fourth to fifth quiz. So uh, I got some question about the, the midterm marks. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward, but I just in case that uh, people uh, still have confusion. So whatever your midterm exam marks can be increased uh, by 10 points maximum, but combined the midterm and the bonus quiz does not go over 100. So that's so. Uh, Unfortunately, on brighter space, the marks on the on the on the grades part it's showing percentage. But this is how you do it: you take the bonus quiz mark. Um, if it's five percent, fifty percent, that's five marks. If it's eighty percent, that's eight marks. You add that to your midterm meter marks, and if it's over hundred, then it comes down to hundred. So, so does it make sense? Okay. Uh, the bonus, I think most of us did well, you know, like I think uh, it's it's not a whole lot point if you didn't review before you do it. And so I made, I think I explained that and it looks like most of us did a review because we did, most of us did a better on the bonus quiz. Okay, so that's about that. So today we are going to Yes, so today we will finish this part about the lease. So we talked about the mostly from lease side. Um, there are two fundamental approach. One is the classification approach, right? It, you classify the lease into operating versus finance slash capital lease. That's the approach used under uh, SV by leasee. Under IFRS, there's called the contract approach. So that if it's a lease contract, you capitalize unless it's uh, short term or low value. Today, we're going to look from uh, uh, the lesser's perspective. But before we do that, uh, I have a quick review because this one uh, is from 2241, but uh, I always thought uh, it's a good thing to review here. So let's say uh, a company called the City Motor sold 10 pickup trucks for 35,000 each, uh, which cost Costed twenty five four thousand each to manufacture, so so the manufacturing cost of each of the truck is twenty four thousand, but they sold it as thirty five thousand. How do we record this transaction? Okay, the math is clear. There's like eleven thousand profit, a gross profit from each sales, right? Yeah, we know that. So, so that's what we call that for this one. So we debit that says the cash, that debit cash, uh, three hundred fifty thousand, and we. Oh, sorry, I don't want these. I don't want the, this. So debit that, and let's say we credit, uh, inventory. Let's say that. Uh, that's 240,000 and we have a gain profit, gross profit. Oh, let me just say GP. That's 110 because we're just talking about 10 trucks, right? Are we okay with that? No? No. No, no. Okay. No, doesn't, look doesn't look right. Why what, what how do you want to fix it? I, I I agree with you. It's not the way to record it. Yeah. Uh, well, we do have the cash and then credit to the uh, or store so that we sales uh, 
sales. sales revenue sales. yeah so we do uh, sales uh, revenue and that will be 350,000 and then and then we debit cost of goods sold right yes because cost of goods sold would be uh 240,000 yeah so that that indeed that's how we do it even though the, it does not affect net income because it's still gross profit 110,000 but that's a proper way to do it because uh, the users of financial statement often use ratios, right? So if just think of the gross profit margin, it will be different because either way, you net income will be the same. But if you record this way, your sales would include the sales that give that hundred and ten thousand profit right if you record the net way the way I first did it like you include the profit on the numerator but you do not have the sales on the denominator right so that makes difference now if i change this story a little bit uh if i change the stock a bit right let's say uh not city motor let's say it's a city a pizza so the uh the pizza shop usually don't have 10 oh that many just they show show sold his its truck for thirty five thousand, which uh let's say had a net book value of twenty four thousand. okay so similar but not the same. Now tell me how this one should be recorded. We will have cash 35, truck. So this will be not, is a truck an inventory? No, a truck is inventory for motor, for like a manufacturer of the truck or the wholesaler of the truck. But the truck is a PPE, for the company that uses it, right? It's inventory, if it's for sale, it's PPE, it's for use. So this would be PPE. In fact, like we should even remove the cost and accumulate depreciation, but since we don't have it, we'll just like say net, just like this is not exactly proper one, but I did not give you the information. So this will be 24,000, okay? And then there will be no sales revenue. Instead, that will be just the gain on sale of PPE, right? 11,000. Okay. So the difference between this one and the previous one is the previous transaction is an operating transaction, right? And the revenue earned from selling goods and services should be recognized when when it's a regular operating sales this one is investing divesting is investing as well right it's divesting uh, a transaction so it's it's dealt differently okay so i i find it's good because this is something we already know but hopefully we look at it from a uh, different perspective you know after we've done so much okay so that's the quick review that we will come to today, later. Okay, so um, to sum up a lesser accounting, or these are all words, what do they mean? So first, IFR uses a classification approach to differentiate between a finance lease and the operating lease for account, uh, in accounting for lesser, okay? Remember, IFR does not use classification approach for leasee, right? For leasee and the IFRs, it's a contract approach. Right of use assets, lease liability. Most of the lease will be capitalized, but for lesser, it's different. Under SB, there is 
bit of more symmetry, but both lesser and the lease use a, a classification approach. Okay, if a lease is very similar to an installment sales or installment purchase, then we consider that it's like a capital finance lease. Otherwise, it's an operating lease. Okay, so uh, this part just uh, let allow me to show you uh, something that I kind of can summarize a little bit, right? Uh, okay, so uh, let me use a, this uh, table. Three row, no, three rows and the three columns. And to summarize it, okay. So uh, there was three two two dimension. So uh, on one side, it's uh, here. I will say it's a um, uh, gap. Oh, okay. I should not. I don't need to do that. So. On one side, it's a gap. This is uh, a first, and this is a uh, SB. Okay. On the other dimension, this is for le 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 lesser. Okay, let's start with the Lee C. And the lesser. Okay, so. For under if first, least you use contract approach. If lesser, use classification approach. Contract approach. Okay. And the for ASB, both are classification approach. Okay. So So when we did solve the accounting problem, we should orient ourselves. So like, are we talking about uh, uh, an, uh, a lesser company or a DC company? What uh, gap does this company follow, right? So that we need to orient that. Okay, uh, despite both IFRS and the SB uh, use classification approach for lesser, there are differences. Uh, there are differences. Um, the difference is uh, if for is more uh, principle based on this matter, and ASPI is more rule based. So the classification classification criteria under ASPI is those hard lines. Okay, seventy five percent of the useful life. 90% of the fair value, you know, whereas under IFRS, it's more kind of what is the essence, what is the characteristic, more qualitatively based criteria, and there are a few more of that, okay, so uh, these three are the same, same test, right, ownership transfer, uh, transfer economic life test, and the recovery of the investment test. But instead of the percentage, the hard line, what they have is almost, okay? Substantially all, you know, those kind of uh, qualitative standards, okay? So, that. and then there are others. So for instance, if an asset is customized for this particular lease, then it definitely should be, um, finance or capital lease because, you know, uh, or if lease absorbs lesser loss, if the lease um, cancels, uh, if lease assumes risk over the amount of residual value, and if there's a bargain purchase option, okay? So so that's under it first. And under um, SV, this is, these are the hard line. These are the hard line. There, it, from Lesser's perspective, there is a additional consideration that is, especially later on when it's a sales type lease, 
that in order for lease to be recognized as a sales type of lease, you should also uh, meet this, this revenue recognition criteria. Okay. Okay. So first step, it's not a conflict complex, but it's kind of a lot of details. It's kind of, I don't, it's not hard, but the most details we need to pay attention. So first level, both uh, under A first, under SB, we should determine whether this is operating lease or that it's kind of finance capital lease, right? Now, after that is determined, if it's a finance or capital lease, then we have to determine whether it's a, a, a sales type or manufactured dealer lease or it's direct financing and or financing lease. Okay, so it, to make a matter worse, the terms and the ASPI and, and the IFRS are different. So instead of a two type of lease, we have four names for it. But essentially is whether the lesser is just earns interest or the lesser will earn interest as well as a manufacturer gross profit. Okay, so um, like lots of financial institute, right? They do, their business model is uh, like lending money. But in, sometimes in, instead of directly lend money to a customer and earn an interest, they can do it through lease. So what they do is if you are a manufacturer and you are seeking finance to purchase an equipment, sometimes this financial institute, they are such a professional lease company who go whatever, in, what is, whatever equipment that you want, I'm going to buy it and I will lease it to you, right? So in that way that the, you know, the present value of the lease payments will be same as the investment. So their only source of income is the interest. Basically, I put money up, up front to purchase this equipment and I lease it to you, pay me gradually. And in your payment of future payments, that includes interest. So that's, that will be direct financing and their ASPI and it will be called just financing and their efforts. But there's only one source of return, that's the interest. Now, alternatively, uh, in this situation would be like uh, uh, the car dealership sourcing, right? So what they do is they go out to buy the cars, trucks, SUVs at wholesale price, and of course, sometimes they can sell it directly. They sell directly, earn a profit, the difference, markup. But they can also, instead of selling them outright, lease it, right? So when they lease the car out, they are making money in two ways. One, there's a price differential, the price they paid to purchase these vehicles versus the price the customer will pay gradually through lease payments. And the secondly, there is also interest in the lease arrangement. So in that case, um, uh, the lease will be called a sales type of lease under ASPI and uh, will be called a manufacturer dealer's lease under IFRS, right? So there's a lot of words, but if you see um, the essence is pretty, um, stream, a straightforward, right? If you make, if you, there is a price differential between what it costs you versus what you are charging your customers or clients, then there is a profit on top of interest. So then it will be different. Okay. Um, so there's a, so here's an example uh, of that. So assume the lease have five year term that begins January 1st, 2020 and is non-cancelable and requires equal rental payment of 25,981.62 dollars. This amortization table 
is the first amortization table that uh, I post on Brightspace. If you look at the Brightspace, there's a, a, a like a amortization table file, Excel file, but there are three tables in it. Okay, so this first one is there's no residual value, so the price is a little bit higher. Okay, so feel free to use that. If you do your homework, you can just use that Excel template to feel free to use that. Uh, okay. Uh, and it requires equal rental payment 25 that that includes a 2000 executory cost. That's maintenance fee. Story similar. The equipment has a cost and the fair value of uh, um, 100,000 to lesser and the economic life of five years and no residual value, you, no initial direct cost are incurred in negotiating and the closing the lease contract. So uh, this sentence, like if the company follows uh, the, the, the SB, these are enough information to say this is going to be finance type of lease, right? Not operating lease. There is a lack of a better word. So it's a, operating lease and then not not operating lease and then the terms gets messy you get four different terms right so it's not operating lease and and their uh, efforts should not be operating lease uh, either 100 percent is pretty significant right yeah so we know that so then also the cost and the fair value are the same they tell us it's not only it's not operating lease, it's either direct financing or financing. Lease. There's no profit, right? Uh, the lease contain no renew option for, and the equipment reverts to lesser at the end of the lease. Collectability uh, is reasonably assured and no additional cost. These are the ASPs revenue recognition criteria, you know, so basically we cover all the bases. Um, no additional cost to be incurred by lesser. The interest rate implicit in the lease is 10%. Uh, the lesser uh, corporation sets annual lease payment to ensure a 10% return on its investment. Uh, shown in previous example, like we, the, the one we set the lease payments, okay, that so we have done the calculation. So we know the present value of lease payment, which is not 25, 982 is 23, 982. Remember the, at the five years, 10% is 100,000. We have done that calculation. And also it's in that uh, uh, table, but, it, but that's just uh, assume that's that. So the lease meets the criteria for classification as a financing type of lease, as not cap operating lease, because there is no dealer profit included. Okay, um, so the gross investment, we know the net investment is hundred thousand, right? But uh, the lesser. When they record this, they record a gross um, investment. So gross investment will be the hundred thousand plus all the interest to be earned, right? So the gross profit would be undiscounted future lease payment. So, so removing the executory cost, so that's twenty five nine eighty one point six two minus two thousand times five. That's it. No discount. So that's one nineteen. 1908.1. So that's a gross profit. And uh, the net investment we already uh, uh, um, uh, uh, compute, but if it's shown, it'll be just the present value of the lease payment with no residual value. So it's 100,000, as we said, right? So this transaction don't, uh, this transaction is just putting here to tell the whole story. The starting point the company is going to purchase this equipment for lease, right? So they will pay 100,000, that's their investment, and then they will purchase the lease. The lease is the, the uh, equipment. Their equipment is purchased to be leased, 
Okay, so that's how they got um, these. So this journal entry uh, establishes the carrying value of this asset is the same as the fair value. So there's no gross profit, right? So establishes that. And then this is the journal entry to record initial lease. So the initial lease will be the lease receivable. This is kind of the same as all the receivables uh, from operating activity. It's the gross amount. We do not count interest, right? This is the five times 23, um, 982. Okay, so that's a gross lease receivable. And we remove the equipment here. The equip equipment is gone. And then uh, the difference between the this net investment and the gross investment is um, the unearned interest income. This unearned interest income for, for lease for for financing type of lease for lesser is different from other unearned revenue unearned income because what where do you report unearned revenue on your balance sheet liabilities right that's how we not normally do that's what normal unearned revenue unearned profit is but this one is counter asset it's, it's on the debit side. So, so you know, you uh, uh, lease receivable net will be 100,000. So this is different from, uh, yeah, okay. So unearned interest income is a contour to receivable um, statement of financial position. So the lease receivable is reported at a net, okay? But, in our journal, you have a separate account. This is how what the journal uh, ledger account look, looks like. You have two, and so uh, so the, we separate these two. So that's we recorded the lease, and then in the same time, uh, first payment is received, and that payment, other than the um, the um, executory cost, which is. Uh, we we credit here we'll explain that later on and then uh the, the 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 lease payment part will be the reduction of lease receivable okay it will be reduction of lease why we credit this executory cost so this cost is um associated with the the cost of the ownership of this asset, right? But this is the operating expenses incurred by the leasee. Leaser is not using it, and a, 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 judging by this, that leaser is not responsible paying it. But this cost is paid by leasee by the through lesser. Okay, so the by leasee through lesser. That, so when lesser make the payment to the maintenance company, it will debit maintenance expense and that will be canceled by this credit and the credit the cash, right? So that's why. So uh, your credit here is to cancel the maintenance and the repairs expense lesser will record when they make payment to the uh, uh, maintenance company, right? So it just, uh, uh, flows through, cancel each other out. In the end, it's the leasee who recognize this and the bear the cost of that. Okay. Um, after that, effective interest method will apply, right? So lease, a uh, lesser will accrue interest earned gradually. So uh, at the end of the first year, uh, one year passed, so the interest is recorded by uh, using the effective interest method. The REIT is 10%. The balance, the net investment is $100,000 minus the first payment. And so the interest is 
$1,602. Okay, so we recognize um, uh, interest or income earned and we reduce unearned interest income. Okay, now this calculation, it, because there's a gross investment, so uh, if we're not careful, we may use the growth investment and that will not be correct. Okay, so we need to make sure that's correct. Um, so after that, the net investment would be um, 100,000 plus um, uh, um, minus 23,981. So that's the first payment and the plus interest accrue, accrue down to it. So on the balance sheet at the end of the first year, the net uh, investment, the net lease receivable will be 83,620. Okay, it will be 83,620. Okay, and the one the net second payment received uh, would it be the same other than the maintenance expense, uh, it's the reduction of lease receivable. So that's if it's direct financing lease or financing lease, this is how we report it. It's a similar, but it also it's different. The difference is to recognize the gross investment and with, with the unearned interest as a contract account. Okay, so that's that. Um, now, if we change that story a little bit, if I change that story a little bit, so if we, I think that because I insert a couple of slides, this lease, the slide number is a little bit different now. But in the, the example, I think that the slide number now becomes uh, 49. Yeah, 49. Yes, I think it's 49, actually. Um, so it's the same lease, five years, you know, lease payment is 2,592, including the 2,000 maintenance costs and so on and so forth. With the only one exception, that is assume that the lesser manufactured the asset, the equipment, and uh, uh, it is in the finished goods inventory, okay? And the cost, the manufacturing cost is 8,500, okay? And the, the regular selling price, that's not the way to say the share, fair value is 100,000. So remember the first transaction we did for the, that um, direct financing lease is we debit, uh, asset purchased for lease to lease 100,000. So the carrying amount there is 100,000. Here, the carrying amount is 95,000. And right, the carrying amount is 95,000. And the selling price of this is 100,000. It's telling us there is a 15,000 gross profit. 15,000 gross profit. So this will be, um, sales type lease or manufacturer dealer lease, okay? So what happens here is, yeah, not, don't, you do not just record 1,500 gross profit as our first review example shows, you need to record revenue and the cost of goods sold. So this part is same, the orange part is the difference, uh, okay? So uh, we lease receive with same gross uh, undiscounted future payments, and uh, uh, sales revenue is the, the fair value, the cash sale price, 100,000. The difference between these two is the unearned interest, okay? Remove that. Now, this is the inventory, not uh, the le assets purchased to le for lease, 85,000, and then we recognize cost of goods sold. 85,000. So that 15,000 profit is reflected when both of these accounts are included in the 
uh, income statement, the differential between these two numbers is the gross profit, right? So um, this is something like, a, you know, accounting, there's a, you, you report a net or report gross. You report gross. You show the gross sales, cost of goods sold, the net 15 will show by, by, by the difference of the two amounts. So that's where, where like a textbook have lots of other details, but this is good enough for us. So this, we just need to know um, there some of some from Lester's perspective, some lease are operating lease, some lease are not operating lease. And if it's not operating lease, then we need to determine whether it's uh, uh, whether there is just interest or there's interest and profit. Okay, if there's just interest, then that's financing or direct financing lease, but there is interest and the profit, then it's sales type or manufacturer dealer type of lease. Okay. Um, so, um, so this is a summary, like a kind of another way to show up my little chart. It says that if we're 16 and SB have similar significant difference in approach to lease accounting for leases. Yes, more difference than for lessers, right? For leases, because if we use a contract-based approach, recognize right of use assets, and uh, for almost all the leases, and under SB use classification approach. In fact, under SB, usually it's 80, 90% of the lease are not capitalized. That is the empirical evidence, okay? Because that's that is the reason um, the change was made because companies realize they can just call their lease operating lease, change the term such that so they don't have to capitalize it, right? And also there's different terminology, right? If we use assets, that's efforts, uh, assets under lease, that's SB. Lease liability, that's a first term. Obligation under lease, that's a SB. SB, uh, if first and SB have substantially the same requirements for lesser because both use a classification approach. Okay. Uh, the difference is if first are more principle based and requires judgment and um, uh, SB is more like a rule based, like it just uh, you have a hard line threshold, right? Also, there is difference in terminology. Okay, so uh, so this I have a couple of things I want to do today. Let me ask you something for for the people who are here now. Um, I got an email I didn't read very carefully about the teaching evaluation. Do you do it online or there you have to do it here? Did you do anything in person in any other courses? I should read email. No. Okay, so maybe it's all online. That, that's, yeah, that's okay. I, I really should have read emails. Uh, anyways, there's so many emails that I just, yeah. On a good day, I read more, but I read all the emails from you guys. But it's, Anyways, uh, so two things. The one I want to show you, um, I want to show you, uh, I want to show you um, a uh, something I post on the Bright Space. Oh, where is it? Uh, it's it's the dollar ramas. Um, reporting on the reporting um, that shows the impact of adopting efforts, okay? Okay, so I think this is good. Okay, so, Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Okay, so this is on Brightspace. Okay, so 
So the first balance sheet uh, is from the fiscal year that ended February 3rd, 2019. So since IFRA 16 uh, became effective for accounting period starting on or after January 1st, 2019, so this one is uh, prepared using the old I think it's IAS 17, old lease accounting standard, right? Classification approach, old lease accounting standard is very similar to uh, ASB's accounting standard for lease. So anyway, so you look at this, um, let me see, uh, just, just look at this, the total uh, assets for 2019 year and uh, it's actually physical 2018, but the year ended February 3rd, 2019, is a little bit over 2 billion, okay? And uh, uh, if you look at the uh, liability side, they do have a finance lease obligation, okay? So that means under the classification approach, some lease are classified as a capital lease or finance lease. And that amount is a little bit, it's a two billion, a uh, three billion, right? It's a, a three billion. Okay, so I have here. And the, the second, this is um, the balance sheet of in the next year's annual report. See that's February 2nd, 2020, right? So in this year, it's after January 1st, 2019. The year started, so IFRA has to be used. Now, since IFRA has to be used for this year, they have to go back to restate. They don't have to do that. In fact, there's two different ways to transition. So uh, Dollarama is special. It's one of the very few companies that actually go back to restated for two years, previous years, right? Okay, so look, that's the same year we just saw, now restated that total asset increased by more than 50%, okay? The big change is this, uh, this item, right of use assets. That's like more than 50% of its total assets it was not on the balance sheet the previous year. Now, if for 16 is implemented, that's how much they have to put on the balance sheet, okay? And on the liability side, um, remember that uh, uh, the, remember what was that, the obligation under lease? Little bit over 3 billion? Yes, now it's a, a one, a little bit of 3 million. Yeah, now it's 1,246,000,000, okay? Yeah, so, so now you can imagine all the leases there, how, what a percentage of that was considered operating lease before it for 16 and capped off balance sheet, right? And that's why, you know, this is uh, very, controversial uh, accounting stand, very significant. And I, I think I mentioned that before this, uh, there is discussion about this uh, starting 1970s and it wasn't until 2006, it was this issue finally was on the uh, agenda of like accounting stand like SB and uh, um, uh, IASB and then, even after that, it took more than 10 years, two exposure drafts, and that was just long, usually on average five years, you know, one exposure draft. But anyways, so this is, this is why it's controversial because companies don't like to show this much liability, it changes the outlook altogether, right? Anyway, so that's uh, what I want to show you. Okay. Um, the, the last part is, this is in the course outline. So I will just uh, uh, mention a little bit uh, here about the sale and the lease back. 
Okay, this is in the appendix uh, of this chapter. Uh, so I, I'm just going to introduce the issue. And, you know, um, as <laughs> the reality is that you guys are going, maybe after you guys are going to forget about 80 or 90% of what I teach you here, hopefully after exam, not before. And, but what I want to return just the awareness of the issue. Okay, so when you see these, you should go, oh yes, we talked about that. And you can go where, look it up and the, to, uh, you know, whatever you need uh, to solve the problem, right? So uh, that's, that's it. That's it. So I'm going to just introduce this issue and why it's relevant. And I will show you the uh, an example that's about it. So, uh, sales and the lease back transaction. So, yeah. So sometimes, uh, you know, if a company owns equipment, it actually needs, right? They um, sometimes they make arrangement to sell them to a third party, to another party and then lease it back right away. So sometimes this equipment doesn't leave, even leave the premises. It's all you know, done in the office, right? I'm, I'm gonna sell it this, and but I'm gonna lease it back. So nothing ever actually changed, okay? So that's called the sale and the lease back. So the owner is the seller and is the leasee. The buyer will be the lesser, okay? So you wonder why company uh, carry out transactions like that. So this, the purpose is mostly financing related concerns, right? So because if you, so for instance, if this equipment it is already paid off, you own it outright, right? When you sell it, you get payment. So you get a lump sum payment right away and you gradually pay, pay the lease payment. So it's like, like borrow a bunch of money, right? Only you don't have to record it as debt, right? So that's that. Another time would it be if the uh, lease is financed, if the lease is financed, but the, the borrowing cost changed, so this is a way of refinancing. You pay off the old debt because you sold it, you got a bunch of money. And then the rate used in determining lease payment will reflect the current rate. So your interest cost will be lower, right? So that's uh, mostly like finance for those concerns. But associated with that is if the carrying amount is less than the fair value, there is also a profit, right? There is a gross difference, the gains, and that could also bound the earnings up. So that's another issue raised by that. Okay, so uh, accounting for sale and lease back. Professor? Yes? Uh, I, I'm not sure you are not sharing your screen. Oh, uh, okay, let me try again. How about now? Yeah, it shows. You see it now? Okay. So I'm looking at, I updated um, uh, the slide. If if you're looking at this, you'll see it. But if you downloaded um, uh, just recently, you will have this. But if you downloaded at the beginning of the two weeks, you don't have this part. Because this part was, uh, I, I noticed it, it's on the course outline but it's in the appendix, okay? So if you want to have this, download again. Okay, so this is the last topic I added in sale and the lease back. It's uh, uh, the owner of the, a, a property, sell it to someone and lease it right back. So the owner and the leasee are the same person. The buyer, the owner is the seller is the and the, is the leasee, the buyer is the lesser. Okay, so um, under uh, IFRS, the, 
the owner and the seller and the leasee should recognize this, well, just almost all the leases as right of use leases. So we have a right of use asset and it has lease liability. Okay, I have lease liability uh, for the leasee. Uh, for the lesser classification approach, you determine whether it's uh, operating lease or it's like financing type of lease and it's if it's a financing type of lease. Okay, usually it will be like a direct financing lease. If, uh, If the transfer asset does not meet the criteria as sales, no sales recognized. Um, we're talking about no sales recognized. So the seller and the lease will continue to recognize transfer assets. And so the money received will be just like a loan, or like a financial liability. Okay, so that. Um, for lesser, no purchase is recognized if the criteria for sales revenue for, for like a, uh, uh, ownership transfer is met. Okay. Um, Only if the risk and the rewards are transferred, uh, you can recognize and their efforts as a sale and you can recognize gain and losses. Okay, so that's um, the difference between that and the SV is even if these uh, risk and reward of transfer, uh, the, the criteria is met, even if you have a gain, that gain would be deferred. That gain will be deferred. Okay. However, if it will be deferred and amortized over term of lease. However, if there is a loss, you recognize loss right away. Accounting conservatives, accounting safer, conservative. Okay. So here's an example. Very simple. So we have uh, 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 the uh, uh, assets owned by um, the owner, the seller, and the le leasee. And the selling price is $80 million. The fair value is $80 million. So that means what, when the leasee is uh, um, leased back, uh, it will, the, the lesser will not have gross profit. However, from a leasee's pers uh, perspective, seller leases perspective, the carrying amount is 75,000, uh, 75.5 million, right? So the cost is 85.5, but there is 10 million accumulated depreciation. Okay, so uh, when this is sold, there's going to be a price differential the term of the lease is the same as economic life, 15 years. We have a 12% interest rate. And so the calculation is the, the annual lease payment um, at the beginning of each year is 10 million, uh, 10 million 487, uh, 443 dollars. And the present value of this lease payment at 12% is $80 million. So these all the calculation is done for us. Okay. Um, so I combined the journal entry for both efforts and the SB together. So this is for uh, 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 and their efforts is right of use lease and their SB if this is capital lease, finance lease, because the 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 transfer um, the useful life test and the recovery of the investment test all met because 100 percent 100 percent right so um, 
So from seller and the lease, first of all, they will record the sales. Okay, they, this is a review transaction similar to that. We're going to record the cash and we'll remove the equipment and there is a profit here or gain here, right? This gain is recognized as realized right away under if first, but under SB, this will be deferred. This gain will be amortized over the 15 period of the lease. So that's a, a difference, okay? And we recognize the lease. We recognize the lease right away that uh, it's called the right of use assets under IFRS. It's called, called the um, aircraft under lease under ASB, 80,000. And we recognize liability, lease liability, that's the term under IFRS, obligations under lease, that's ASB term, the 80, 80 million dollars. There should be another transaction, the first payment, right? That, but that would be, I can I can add it here. I don't know why I was so economical with this, my space, but I can just add it, you basically debit uh, uh, lease liability, credit cash. So this is just the commencement of the lease. Does it make sense? Yeah, so uh, two differences. One is the terms. And more significantly is the treatment of this gain, the profit, right? Uh, this 4,500,000 will include in the income statement of the current year under IFRS, but only a portion of that, you know, uh, the, the, there's different who amortize it. Straight line is acceptable. So it could it be just one fifteenth of that will be recognized under ASPE. Okay, so that's two different. Uh, from buyer lesser's perspective, this will be direct financing or financing lease because um, they paid eighty thousand for something that has a value eighty thousand, right? So they will. They, this is the transaction. They purchased aircraft for lease, and then they paid eighty thousand dollars, and then they lease it out. So they removed the aircraft for lease, and they record gross investment. And the difference between the uh, gross investment and the fair value, the net investment, 80 million, is the unearned interest income. We're not used to see this big number of interest because the interest rate has been like 5 6% for many, many years. So we are not in, uh, used to see this interest this big, but there was a time interest is a double digits, right? And in this case, the interest is a 12%. It's a not uh, interest you will see in recent times. So maybe these numbers look a little bit uh, unbelievable, but that was the reality once. I remember mortgage rate 18% at one time. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that's that 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 is if you do the cal calculation, yes, that is what it is. That is uh, seventy-seven uh, uh, million three hundred eleven thousand six hundred forty-five. So that's that's it. So uh, the the two difference is um, well. A little bit of background of this because now the lease accounting standard changed. So, like you see, lesser uh, the leasee and the seller, uh, it, they still have this uh, lease liabilities, still have the assets. Uh, but imagine the time the lesser, uh, the owner, can sell the equipment get the paid of cash, remove it from the balance sheet and lease it back and call it operating lease. So the transaction can improve the outlook of your financial statement significantly. You have a lot less debt, uh, you will have a lot less assets. So your debt ratio will go down, your ROA will go up, that, those are all good things. On top of that, you have real benefit that is you, you actually have more cash on hand 
And if the interest rate has decreased, you can uh, 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 reduce your finance cost going forward, right? So that's um, so that was the uh, very tricky, very controversial, problematic uh, transaction before. And because the change of lease accounting standard, the off balance sheet incentive um, is removed under efforts, but it could still be um, concern under ASPE, okay? But people still engage in these transactions, even that off balance sheet incentive is no longer there because there is a real benefit. As I mentioned, they improve your liquidity by having more cash on hand and it could save on borrowing costs if you do it when the REIT changed. Um, new borrowing will be less costly than old loan arrangement, you know, that, so that's why it's still um, being done, okay? So that's about that. Let's stop sharing that. So uh, we have a couple minutes left. So let's look at that amortization table again. I want to look at that amortization table again. Uh, look at that from Lester's perspective this time. So I think I think I I did uh, update that. So it is on white space again. Um, and so sorry, I did not mean to show that. I shouldn't show that. Yes, this is the one. And feel free to um, use this. I, I, it will help a lot if you prepare an amortization schedule yourself, you know, um, it, it helps all the calculations and all that. So this is the one we did last time, all right. So, oh, right, <laughs> thank you. Okay, okay, so uh, today is the, this one, right? So from Lesser's perspective, uh, same amortization table, but the gross investment would be just all the lease payment add together, right? And uh, um, the interest, remember, even though they uh, recognize this gross investment called lease receivable but the interest is really based on the net okay so this interest is still the net investment from the start subtract the first payment the remaining balance is the balance outstanding throughout the first year right and so the interest should be based on this amount the difference between the gross investment and this will be all the interest to be earned. So at the beginning, from Lesser's perspective, these are unearned interest, right? Is the net investment of 100,000. Okay, so that's from Lesser's perspective, this, this uh, amortization table. You, on the balance sheet, you have the net of these two, accounts receivable, uh, lease receivable, with this contra, account, which is unearned revenue. So the net is the uh, net investment. That's what's shown on the balance sheet. Okay. From Lisi's perspective, uh, the present value of lease payment is capitalized. So right of use assets at the very start will be 100,000 and uh, or lease asset under lease will be 100,000. So it's lease liability. And that will change as uh, each payment um, is made. On one hand, you amortize your lease liability using effective interest methods. On the other side, uh, for the asset side, you depreciate using the street line most times. Okay, so that's that. So that's without the residual value. And the, the table on the here are the ones we look at that is when you have a residual value. Okay, and when you have residual value. When there's a residual value, regardless it's guaranteed or it's unguaranteed, 
lesser take that into consideration in setting the lease payment. So this lease payment, because there are residual value, the lease payment is lower. However, from leasee's perspective, if it's unguaranteed, it ignores that. Only capitalize the, the, um, uh, the lease payment, right? And so the a net of these two is 96,896. Okay, and uh, um, if the residual value is guaranteed, that means the leasee potentially will have to pay 5,000, up to 5,000 at the end of the lease term. So then therefore they include, um, our example would just include all the lease payment it potentially will have to make. So that's um, the capitalized amount include the residual value. Okay, include the residual value. Um, and uh, so there is one more uh, uh, line in this amortization table that's the end of last year. Without the residual value, that balance becomes zero at the beginning of the last year with the last payment. But with, with the guaranteed residual value, there is a um, a line show what the balance will be at the end of the last year. At the beginning of that, it's uh, 5,000 and they need to make a payment that reduce the balance to zero. Okay, now this is not the payment. This 5,000 is the transfer of the uh, equipment back, right? And if the fair value of that equipment is less than that, that's our loss. Whatever you have to pay under guaranteed residual value agreement is your loss to be recognized at the end. So that's, a, um, uh, that's all about this chapter uh, after, yes. So there is an assignment uh, due. So now we covered everything. You can finish that. Any questions? No? Oh, good. Okay. All righty. Uh, bye for now. Professor, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, 